Hello and welcome back to CS128 Honors. In this lesson module we've been talking about Git and in this lesson we're going to talk about your first workflow with Git. So let's do a little bit of vocab review from the last lesson. First off we talked about directories which is a folder on a computer system. We talked about commits which is a snapshot of your code at a point in history so that you can refer back to it at a later date. We talked about repositories which is where all of your commits are stored. We talked about the local repository, which is the repository on your computer, and we talked about remote repositories, also known as Origin, which is a repository hosted on a server, usually GitHub. So let's talk about git init and git clone, because these are the first two commands that you're likely to run with git, because they're the two that put the repository onto your computer. The first command, git init, will create an empty repository in the current directory, and it will have no files or commits in its history. It will be an empty repository ready for you to use. And the usage of it is literally just typing git init. Meanwhile, with git clone, instead, it will download an external repository, typically from origin, and set it up as a local repository in the same directory. And the usage for that is git clone and then putting the URL to that repository. And you need to make sure that you have access to that repository if it's a private one. All right, so now that we're in our CS120 environment, we can get started. If we wanted to create a new git repository from scratch, all we do is run git init like so in the directory that we wanted to create a repository in. But today we're going to be cloning a repository from GitHub. So to show how to do that, I'm going to go over to GitHub now and take a look at this repository. So as you can see, there are a bunch of different things, but the most important one to look at is this code button over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on that and you'll see it will give us a command to run and we can just click this button right here to copy it into our pasteboard. And this will give us the URL that we need to clone a repository. So now going back to VS Code, we are going to go into this honors directory because that's where I want to put this project. And so I'm going to go in there and I'm going to say git clone like so and paste the repository in. And once it does that, it will go in. And now if we take a look at that directory, you'll now see the howdy world folder. And same thing over here, you can see we have all of our files in here. So now for the rest of this uh, demonstration, I'm going to open up that specific folder as well. So let's talk about git add. Git add will mark the files to be committed in the next commit because by default, commits will only commit the files that have been added to the staging area. And so it will not commit any files automatically for you. You need to run a different command to commit files. This will just move them and mark them to be committed in the next commit. And to use git add, you have one of three options. You can run git add and then a specific file or directory. This is the safest, but it can be a little bit cumbersome to type them out if you change a lot of files. You have git add a, which will add all of the files that you've changed since the last commit. Keep in mind though, that it will not add any new files that you wrote since the last commit. And then finally, you have git add dot, which will add all files in the current directory and any subdirectories. This one's slightly dangerous though, because if there's a file you don't want to commit, you might accidentally commit it using this command. And then finally, Keep in note that there is a file called git ignore and inside that file there's a pattern and it will tell git to ignore any of those files and it will not let you add it unless you specifically tell git to do so. So git add will ignore those files in the git ignore. So let's give a quick demo on git add. Alright, so now that we're in our environment we are going to make a change so that we can run git add. So opening up this howdyworld.cpp file, you can see that this is actually saying hello world instead. And if I run that just to make sure, you'll see that that's exactly what happens. So we're going to change this to be howdy world because that is the one that is more correct. So as you can see, we now have howdy world. And on the left hand side, you'll see this little blue line basically tells us that that line of code got changed. So now that we know that that's been changed, we're going to make our uh, code compile again. And we're going to run it just to make sure that everything's working. As you can see, it says howdy, we're good. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to add that so that we can make a commit. So we're gonna run git add, and we could do dash a because this file is already being tracked, and you know that because it's dash m, or it's an m up here as opposed to an a, which means that it's been modified as opposed to added. So by running dash a here, you'll see that it works, and if we run git status, it'll tell us 
that this commit will be uh, committed. We can also run git add howdyworld.cpp or we could run git add dot and that would add everything in the directory that is not inside the git ignore file. So now that we have everything added, let's go back over the slides to see how we make a commit. All right, let's talk about git commit. Git commit will add all of the files that are in the staging area that have changed since the last commit. And it will attach your email and name as well as when you committed all to this commit so that you have that metadata and information in the future. It also will require a message that you optionally add through the commit process. So one way to do that is by just running git commit. And what this will do is it will open up a editor for you to put in whatever message you want. Another option is to do git commit dash m and then your commit message in quotation marks. And th these two things have the same functionality except one can be done directly from the command line whereas the other you have to edit uh, the line manually. And then finally we have git commit dash am which will commit all of the change files similar to running git add dash a and then running git commit dash m. So you're able to chain these things together to make very quick workflows if you need be. All right, so now that we know what command we need to run to make a commit, let's do exactly that. So in the command line, we're going to type git commit, and then we're going to use the dash m flag to leave a message. And inside here, we're going to put a message saying change hello to howdy. And this way we know exactly what change was made, and we can always refer back to it and see what exactly we were doing. And this way, it's super descriptive. We know what was going on. And so if I hit enter, you'll see one file changed, which means one modification, and that commit was made. If we were to go into the log, you don't need to worry about that command. You can see that this commit was made by me on this date with this email, and it'll give this message. So let's go back to the slides to learn about how we can send this to other developers. So now that we've committed our changes, let's talk about git push. Git push is the command that will upload any new commits to origin and how you use it is simply running git push. As long as you have access to the repository, then it will push it up for you. All right, so now we're going to push this to GitHub and in order to do that, all we have to do is type in git push, hit enter, and because we're already logged in on git, it will do everything for us. And now if we were to go over to GitHub and refresh the page, you'll see a new commit was made and you can take a look at that commit itself and see exactly what got changed. So let's talk about git pull. Git pull is the command that will download any commits that are in origin but not in your local repository and will apply them to your local repository. To run it, all you have to do is have access to a repository and run git pull, similarly to git push. A pull, let's take a look at that. All right, so now that we know how to pull, let's take a look at a situation where we would want to do that. So as you can see here, there's a new commit that was just made. It says, update the howdy world message printed. So I want to see this commit on my own machine because I don't know, maybe someone else made it for me or I just want to keep up to date for future development. So let's go back over to VS Code and what we're going to do is we're going to type in git pull. And as you can see, when I run that, it's going to pull in the new changes and it tells us that the new changes were howdy cs128 and honor students and so if i run cl howdy world.cpp and do the object file of howdy world and try and run howdy world you'll see it will now say howdy cs128 and honor students let's go back to the slides so in summary in this lesson we showed you how to use git clone and git init to make repositories on your device, git add to add your files that you've changed to the staging area, git commit to commit those staged changes into the history, git push to upload those changes to origin or another remote repository, and then git pull to download any new ones from the remote repository. I hope you enjoyed today's lesson and in the next lesson we'll talk about merge conflicts. Hope to see you then.